There's a pause between the grand finale though, just to keep you. Absolutely wonderful, isn't it? Aren't you glad you came to Munich for this? Excitement on all of your faces. Here come the knights, Bavaria, blue and white, Austria, in red and white. Who will win? Do not know. you on the second time someone will win the joust off. Rock out with the block out. <laughs> so, I love the look on all of your faces. You're like... <laughs> but can you imagine being a little boy in the 1900s seeing this? It was awesome! Glockenspiel was built in 1908. We had airplanes back then. <laughs> technology they came up with. I see people every day applaud for Glock and Steel and I'm like, really? <laughs> I had someone the other day ask me, are those real people? <laughs> and I was like, yes. They are trained by the city of Munich. You must be born in Bavaria to become a Glock and Steel character. It would be awesome. <laughs> I don't want to be a jouster in I know they say there's no such thing as a stupid question. Are you right? Come again, like Lord of the Rings and Star Wars put together. Oh, oh, Austria loses again every single day, three times a day for the last 103 years. I am going to let Liz tell you about the second scene. It's far more exciting than the first. It is, indeed. Now, this one is soon going to reset, and the second one will start playing. Now, the second one is a lot better. This tells the story of the plague. Now, the thing was, when the plague hit Munich, People either died or they were afraid of getting the plague. So what they would do is they would barricade themselves in their houses. They self-quarantined themselves. The problem was if people were locked in their houses, they weren't going to the beer halls anymore. They weren't going to the markets and because of it, the economy went downhill. Now when the plague was over, nobody knew because everyone was still locked in their houses. So the Duke at the time, he needed to give people a sign that it was okay to come out again. He couldn't write a sign because nobody could read, okay? It would take too long to knock on everybody's doors. No television, no internet, no radio. So this Duke is very creative and rather clever. So instead of doing all this, he turned to the means of interpretive dance. <laughs> yes, what he did was he chose the Coopers to do this. Now, does anyone know what a Cooper does? makes barrels. Yes, makes barrels. <laughs> Coopers make barrels, so they were essential for the economy. Because what do you put in a barrel? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> as well as, but the most exciting thing. I don't, I don't think anybody gets excited about wheat. <laughs> What's for dinner? <laughs> wheat! <laughs> exactly. So you put your beer in a barrel. So the Coopers, they were very important men, and they were sent out onto this square to do the interpretive dance for the plague is over. And the dance was that. This spinny, spinny thing. <laughs> exactly, hand on your head, you cock your leg, and you just start doing that. Okay? It's very nice indeed. <laughs> now, this dance was so successful, in fact, it was ordered to be danced every seven years for the rest of, of eternity. Because people understood miraculously. This was a sign for the plague was over. Everyone came back out of their houses. They went back to the markets. They went back to the beer halls. Just because they saw some men twirling. <laughs> Don't ask. Now, as well as these spinny, spinny men, there's one particular man in the middle. Now, he's a very special man. He's a Cooper. He danced, but he had the added responsibility of entertaining the children. He had one very special dance move. Can you see? The thrust. Yeah. <laughs> now, he would go up to our children and thrust in their face. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely man. Not only would he do that, he'd thrust away and then put blob of paint on your child's nose. Now, you know, 16th century face painting, nice idea, but what was paint made out of? Exactly, so not only was he potentially perverting your child, he was also potentially giving them lead poisoning. <laughs> now, the freaking thing today is that he thrusts, but he still moves his head as if he's still looking for children today. 
Just rust that to give lead poisoning. <laughs> and plus he's rocking a moustache like Freddie Mercury, which makes it even better. So there we go. Now that is indeed the Clown Cooper. Spiel. Fritz is going to step forward. I'm going to ask you guys to skip back just a little bit. I don't want to hurt anybody. Back up just a few steps, few steps, few steps. To the very end of the Glockenspiel. Fritz is going to step forward. Keep in mind he has a three meter wing span. He steps forward. He extends his wings the full three meters. He claws his way through the netting and swoops out over the Marian Platz. Mary's column shoots like a rocket to the sky. David Hasselhoff yells off the side of the Rod House, singing, I've been looking for freedom. Fritz Yell spews beer out of his mouth, and we all raise our glasses and toast to the glory of Glockenspiel. <laughs> <laughs> Read about it in your guidebooks. <laughs> okay, that's my fairy tale version of grand finale. What really happens is far grander than that. What really is going to happen is at the end of the Glockenspiel, Fritz is going to step forward. Are you ready? And he's going to do this. Five minutes. <laughs> Sweet. I, I see you looking at me like Sonia, that sounds exciting.